Hello and welcome to this talk from the Museum of Human Diseases at St George's University of London. I'm Carol Shields and I'm the museum curator. In this series of podcasts, I'm going to be sharing some of the stories from the museums and archives with you. This story is about a 29-year-old man who was admitted to hospital in 1902. He was fair, delicate in build, and was thought mainly to be suffering from tuberculosis, based both on the signs he was displaying and also that his brother was suffering from tuberculosis. We are able to follow this man's story by reading the history and clinical details that they often recorded in the hospital's post-mortem records. At St George's, we have what is likely to be one of the oldest collections of post-mortem records in existence, dating back to the 1840s. These records are digitised and are being catalogued and made available online. They give a rich social history of the patients at St George's over the time period from 1841 to 1917. This image, for example, gives us an insight of the occupations of the patients over this time period. Some of these unheard of or very rare today, such as butler or lady's maid. From these handwritten records, we know that he was spitting up blood, that his voice was affected and that he was always sleepy. Diphtheria wasn't suspected. They still thought he had tuberculosis. He was given treatments such as silver nitrate, probably for its antibacterial properties. And he was also given gelatin which is a source of protein. But these would have been ineffective against any bacterial infection, and the postmortem records tell us that his temperature dropped and he died around two weeks after admittance to hospital. It wasn't until the postmortem that the true cause of his death became known. The postmortem book records that his larynx was well nigh occluded by a thick yellow membrane and that pure diphtheria bacteria were cultivated in the laboratory from this membrane. His remains are still in the museum today, as shown here, and you can clearly see the large bacterial growth in his throat. It serves as a reminder of the power of vaccination to prevent this disease, as everyone is now offered protection against diphtheria as part of the childhood vaccination program in the UK. But in 1902, diphtheria was a serious illness, and in the absence of any curative treatment, he unfortunately died from the infection. As the postmortem records continue to be catalogued, we are learning about more cases of diphtheria in the hospital. In this visual representation, for example, you can see the number of cases in 1887 to 1888. And you can see that it tends to be a childhood infection and that it affects mainly those under nine years old. This is also illustrated in some of the information we can read about in the postmortem records. These are all cases of diphtheria in children ranging from the age of six to nine years old. The doctors frequently comment on where the children lived and where they attended school. They also tend to comment on the drainage of the water in their area, as they thought that this might have contributed to the spread of the disease. Through this, the doctors were attempting an early form of contact tracing, as you can see in this map of cases of diphtheria from 1887 to 1888, based on the addresses given in the postmortem cases. The red star marks the location of the hospital at the top, and in blue, the addresses of the children with diphtheria. Around this time, parts of Pimlico were quite poor, although it was generally quite a well-to-do neighbourhood. And most of the addresses noted seem to have been in charitable housing projects built to provide affordable housing. Thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed hearing about the museums and archives. If you'd like to keep in touch, you can catch up with us on Instagram at SGUL Museum Archives. Thank you.